Chapter 8, 71 The few girls at the front looked at each other and asked, Helios is your cousin? Why don't you tell us he's your brother instead? Riley lifted her chin and replied, I'm not Helios' cousin? Feel free to go to the Bouchers and find it out yourself. After that, she stood in front of the entrance and pointed at them. I warn you. I've already called the police, and they're on their way here now. If you guys don't want to be charged for disturbing the peace and be sent to jail, then get the hell out of here now. Who the hell do you think you are to chase us away? Get that bitch out of here right now. Those few girls went forward and began pushing Riley. Who are you calling a bitch, you bunch of bitches? Riley flew into a rage and began fighting them. However, there was no way Riley could fight against a group of people. Suddenly, someone kicked her, and she lost her balance. She fell on the steps behind her and hit her waist. Her face turned pale instantly, and she nearly passed out from the pain. What are you guys doing? Barbara was worried about Riley, so she came out to see if there was anything she could do. However, she saw Riley fall on the steps the moment she appeared. Riley! She pushed through the crowd and helped Riley to her feet. Are you all right? Riley's face was pale and cold beads of sweat were trickling down her forehead. It took her quite a while to come around from the pain and reply, not so good, Barbara turned around and pointed at the group of girls. If anything happens to her, none of you are getting away. Not only you guys are making a fuss here, but you're hurting an innocent person. Is this your quality? Aren't you guys going to make a scene? Aren't you guys going to stand up for your idol? Very well, then. I should post you all on the internet and see if you guys can bear the responsibility or not. With that, she took her phone out and began taking pictures of the people. A woman took a step forward and tried to snatch her phone away. Barbara pushed her away. Why? You're afraid to be exposed by me for what you've done. You're scared now? I dare you to take pictures of us, the woman threatened. Barbara scoffed coldly and replied, why not? I'll make sure that all of you will look good in the photos. The woman's expression changed, and she shouted. Get her phone. Quickly. The group of girls rushed forward. Some of them tried to get Barbara's phone out of her hands, but Barbara protected her phone at all costs and wrestled with them. Freeze. A voice rang out Maisie arrived at the scene with a few police officers and stopped the farce. The police officers all had serious expressions etched on their faces. They pulled the girls away and said, You girls really have a lot of guts to cause a commotion and get into a fight. The leading police officer glanced at them and ordered, take them all away. A police officer came up to Maisie. Both of your friends have to come with us as well. We need to take a statement from them. Maisie nodded. After Barbara and Riley gave their statements, the police officers brought the group of girls away. Maisie walked up to them, who looked battered, and asked, Are you two all right? I'm fine, Barbara replied as she shook her head. She turned her head around and looked at Riley. But Riley is injured. Maisie reached out to Riley and asked, Where did you hurt yourself? Riley just kept her head low and refused to say anything. Maisie did not see any wounds on her other than a few bruises on her arm. However, Riley's face was pale. She glanced at Maisie, looking as if she wanted to say something. Riley, you have to tell us where you hurt yourself, Maisie asked again. Riley bit her lips and looked like she was about to cry. I want to go to the hospital. Barbara and Maisie exchanged a glance. When the three of them came to the hospital, Riley suddenly said that she wanted to go to the gynecology department. Both Barbara and Maisie were stunned for a moment. Looking at the embarrassed expression on her face, Barbara asked, Riley, are you pregnant? Chapter 872 Riley was stumped. She was so anxious that she was on the verge of crying. Of course, I'm not. Maisie seemed to have understood something. She frowned and chimed in, all right. Let's go to see the doctor now. 
While Riley was getting herself checked in the gynecology department, Maisie and Barbara waited outside. After a short while, Riley came out of the room with the nurse. Her eyes were red around the rims, and it seemed like she had cried. Maisie opened her mouth and asked, Riley, you, she kept her head low and did not say anything. Barbara sat in front of the nurse and asked, may we know what's going on with our friend? The nurse looked at her and replied, she's fine. Her hymen is ruptured due to external force and bleeds a little. Barbara was stunned. It took her quite a while before she came around to her senses and asked, can something like that happen as well? The nurse answered matter-of-factly. The toughness of the hymen varies from individual to individual. Some will break when they're having sex for the first time, but others might break theirs when they're subjected to external forces such as horseback riding or bicycle riding. Riley stood at the side. Her mouth pouty and her face red with sadness. She felt embarrassed at what had happened to her. After the trio left the gynecology department, Riley put her head on Maisie's shoulder and asked, Z, do you think? Should, Barbara patted her shoulder and chimed in, I suggest you not to. There are too many risks. Besides, this is an accident. It isn't that, Barbara is right. Maisie turned around to look at her. We're now in the modern era. Nobody would care about something like that. Riley was stunned. Then, she lowered her head and mumbled. I, I thought all of the men care a lot about this, Barbara said, standing with her arms across her chest, I don't think Mr. Lucas would mind. You can just be honest with him and tell him the truth. Don't, Riley said, her face turning red with embarrassment. Nobody would believe it. Besides, it's so embarrassing. I'd rather not tell anyone about it. The news of Helios fans getting detained by the police for causing trouble was posted on the internet, and his true fans were infuriated. These fake fans had stirred a social media storm. It was also found out that they always acted as fake fans for celebrities and went around spreading fake rumors about them. When Helios saw the news, his face sank. He sent Nina to the media outlets to find out who was the one that had exposed his photo. As expected, after Nina returned, she said, Nels, the reporters told me that the photo was given to them by someone, but she isn't a paparazzo. They also said that it was a woman who called them. And she told them that she has a lot of scandals about you on her hands. Woman? Helios frowned. Nobody had been following him when he sent Barbara back that day, but someone had taken a photo of him when he came out. The photo had been taken downstairs. And those troublemakers were able to locate Barbara's house. Therefore, he suspected it was someone very familiar with Barbara. Could it be Katrina? Is there a call record? Yes. Nina had asked the reporters about the phone number. Helios took a look at it and said, Go find out whose number this belongs to. Nina nodded. Okay. In the afternoon, Barbara returned to her apartment. When she came out of the elevator, he saw a man wearing brown glasses standing in the corridor waiting for her. Even though he tried to cover himself up, Barbara was still able to recognize him through his body figure. Mr. Boucher? Helios turned around and looked at her. The sunlight from the westbound sun reflected on his glasses and cast a warm glow on his off-white casual suit with a warm glow through the window, making him look even more gentle and elegant. Are you all right? I'm fine. Barbara stood in front of him and smiled. Are you here to see if I'm okay, Mr. Boucher? Chapter 8, 73 Helios lowered his head and said apologetically, I've learned everything, and I'm sorry for the trouble. I've looked into it, and those people aren't my fans. Helios knew his fans very well. His fans would never do such outlandish or even irrational things in his name. Yeah, I know. Barbara nodded. It did not matter if she believed him or not. Even if they were really his fans, she could understand as well. Without waiting for Helios to say anything, she looked at him and said, I'm the one who caused you trouble. It seems I have to be careful from now on. 
If you have nothing else to do, Mr. Boucher, then I'll. Let's move, he chimed in, stunning Barbara. She looked at him in confusion and asked, what? Helios looked at her and answered, it was Katrina. It was Katrina who took that picture of us when I sent you back that day. She knows where you live, so it isn't safe for you to continue staying here. It took Barbara quite a while before she finally came around to her senses. You. You know who did it already? He nodded. The security system in your neighborhood isn't that great, honestly. I can help you to look for other places to stay. Barbara had no idea that Helios would help her look into this matter, and what surprised her the most was that it was Katrina behind all this. Indeed, Helios was right. Katrina knew where she lived and had seen Helios there before. She lowered her head and fell into contemplation. After a long while, she looked at Helios and said, Well, thank you then, Mr. Boucher. Two days later, Barbara moved from her original apartment building to a more upscale apartment building known as Sky High Park. Sky High Park had a strict security system. The monthly rent for a single apartment was about $900, and it was near the administrative area with convenient transportation. Most of the local well-paid white-collar workers and even the first- and second-tier celebrities chose this place to stay. Since Maisie was free today, she took her two kids and helped Barbara to move into her house. Both of the kids were wearing matching clothes. They looked so adorable. And many older people in the neighborhood loved them a lot. Barbara turned around to look at the two kids surrounded by a group of old people and chuckled. Both of your kids have really strong genes. They don't look like you at all, and they look more like Mr. Goldman. She had wanted to tell Maisie about this when she stayed at the Goldman Mansion the other day. Maisie turned around to look at her and chuckled. Why don't you have a baby and play with them too? Barbara was stumped. She carried the stuff into the elevator and said, Please. Just give me a break. My father doesn't urge me to get married, yet you do. Maisie let out a long sigh meaningfully. I'm thinking that if Helios has a kid, it'll actually be kind of good if he looks like his father. Barbara was stunned. She had a feeling that Maisie was implying something. When the elevator door opened, she walked out and said, My relationship with Helios isn't like what you think. Maisie was walking behind her. She couldn't hold herself and chuckled again. Who knows? Colton and Daisy were talking with the group of old people downstairs, suddenly, something flashed from the bushes nearby. Daisy was very sensitive toward this kind of flash. After all, she had become familiar with this kind of flash when she was a child actor and was photographed by the paparazzi. Perhaps the person had forgotten to switch off the flash, so she looked toward the source of the flash and saw someone hiding in the bushes. Daisy then walked toward the bushes and saw a young man wearing a hat doing something to his camera. Are you a paparazzo? Daisy asked, startling the young man. He raised his head and saw Daisy standing outside of the bushes. She was wearing a blue dress and looked like an angel. The young man rose to his feet and felt embarrassed after getting caught taking candid photos. Before he could say anything, Daisy suddenly turned her head around and shouted in her soft voice, Colton, there's a strange guy over here. Chapter 874 Wait, I'm not Dash just when the young man was trying to explain for himself, Colton and the rest of the old people from the neighborhood arrived. The group of old people studied him from head to toe and said, I've never seen you in this neighborhood before. You are not a human trafficker, are you? The young man lifted his arms and quickly explained, I'm not a human trafficker, I'm a scout. When he saw that the group of old people did not believe him, he rapidly pulled out his working ID here. This is my working ID. Daisy knew what a scout was. However, her mother had told her to focus on her studies. They would only consider whether she wanted to join the entertainment industry or not when she was 18. Tilting her head, Daisy said, Sir. Colton and I aren't going to become actors now. We still have to go to school. The young man was persistent and replied, It's okay. 
we can make an appointment first. You can sign a contract with our company when you grow up. Colton crossed his arms in front of his chest and said, Sir, do you really not know about it? My sister has already signed a contract with a company. The young man was stunned. Colton sighed, My sister has been shooting movies with Helios ever since she became an actor. Do you think she needs to sign any contract with another company? After she grows up, many people will approach her. The young man couldn't be blamed for not recognizing Daisy. She had not appeared in the entertainment industry in the past three years. Besides, she had only been four years old when she was cast in the movies. She was eight years old now and had grown up a lot. She looked more beautiful, which was why he couldn't recognize her. Godfather Helios when Daisy saw Helios coming out of his car not far away, she smiled and ran up to him. Helios grabbed her and picked her up from the ground. It seems like you've put on some weight, Daisy. Daisy snorted and replied, that's because I've grown taller. Helios turned his head to look at the young man. He squinted his eyes and asked, you're from the Zester Media Corporation? The young man scratched the back of his head and smiled. Yeah. You still remember me, Mr. Boucher? Helio smiled and asked, What's wrong? I thought you were an agent? When did you become a talent scout? The young man replied in embarrassment, Well, I need to put food on the table. Godfather Helios, he is an agent? Daisy asked, her voice filled with disbelief. After all, the young man in front of her did not look like a good person to her. When she took a closer look at him, she felt he was an unreliable person. Helios nodded. Although he's kind of unreliable, he's a good agent. The young man was rendered speechless. He could just compliment me. Why must he say I'm unreliable? Both Daisy and Colton covered their mouths and smiled. At the same time, Maisie and Barbara appeared in the crowd. What is going on here? Maisie looked in the direction the crowd was looking and saw Helios. So it's you, Mr. Boucher. The people in the neighborhood had seen a lot of celebrities, so they did not feel intrigued. Therefore, they did not stir up a ruckus when Helios showed up here. Helios put Daisy down and rubbed her head. I'm free today, so I came here to see if there's anything I can do. Just when Barbara was about to say something, Maisie wrapped her arms around her and smiled. Of course, there are. Since today is the first day Barbara moves here. She needs someone to help her clean her apartment. I'm sure you're more than willing to help, right, Mr. Boucher? Barbara suddenly tugged at her sleeve and pitched her voice low. Maisie. I thought you were going to help me. I suddenly remembered that I have something important to do in the company, so I'm sorry, Barbara. Well, since Mr. Boucher is here, I'm sure he can help you. Hey, you, Barbara watched as Maisie left with her kids. She was stunned. Honestly. She knew that Maisie was creating an opportunity for her to stay alone with Helios, but this was too blatant. It was like. It was like she was going to win over his favor. Chapter 8, 75 Some fragmented memories flashed across Barbara's head. She felt that she had said something to Helios, but couldn't remember it. Maisie brought Daisy and Colton to their car. Colton turned his head around to look at the young man and asked, Why are you still following us? Sir? The youth laughed dryly. Then, he collected himself, cleared his throat, and said in a serious manner, I think that since your sister is a child star, she has a lot of potential. She will have a bright future. I guarantee that she will be very popular when she grows up. Colton looked at him speechlessly. The young man gave him his name card and said confidently, I'll wait until your sister comes of age. I'll sign her and make her into a celebrity who's even more famous than Mr. Boucher. Colton took over the name card and took a look at it. The name card read Zester Media Corporation's agent, Triden Gallagher. He did not throw the name card away even though the young man had already left but stuck it into his pocket. After all, he might be able to use it in the future. 
After they got into the car, Maisie asked, Who were you talking to just now? Colton answered honestly, a talent scout. He has his eyes set on my sister, and he said he'll wait until she grows up. While he was talking, he looked at Maisie and asked, Mom, will you say no if Daisy wants to join the entertainment industry after she grows up? Maisie was stunned. She turned her head to look at Daisy and replied, After Daisy grows up, she can do whatever she wants. I won't interfere with her decision. Just when Colton was about to say something, his phone rang. It's Grandpa. Colton answered the call, and Nicholas told them to return to the Goldman's family estate to have dinner tomorrow. After all, Nolan's birthday was just around the corner. Maisie brought the kids back to the Goldman mansion. The phone screen showed the message Barbara had sent ten minutes ago, traitor. Maisie looked at her phone and chuckled. She replied, what's wrong? You're not having a good time with Mr. Boucher? Barbara, it's so embarrassing, Barbara stood on the balcony and sent messages to Maisie. The memories in her head were getting more vivid, so she had no choice but to escape to the balcony. Barbara, make sure you stop me when I want to drink wine in the future. Maisie, there's nothing I can do if you want to drink wine. What's wrong? Could it be that you did something to him when you, Barbara, no? It isn't like what you think. I'm just worried that I might spew nonsense when I'm drunk. She was confident that she had said something to Helios when she was drunk. However, on the day when they played Truth or Dare, she couldn't remember anything at all about what she said to Helios when he sent her home. She went back inside, and to her surprise, Helios had finished cleaning her living room, she felt kind of embarrassed for him to do something like this for her. Mr. Boucher. Yeah? Helios had rolled his sleeves up to the elbows. It seemed to her that he wouldn't sweat after doing all the chores. He still looked fresh and clean. Barbara opened her mouth and said, Thank you for your help today. I'll treat you to a meal tonight. Helios looked at the kitchen and asked, Are you going to cook? T. Barbara was stunned. She looked toward the kitchen as well, and an awkward expression appeared on her face. Helios narrowed his eyes and asked, Could it be that you don't know how to cook? Barbara did not say anything. Helios frowned. Have you been living on food delivery this whole time? Barbara fell silent soon, both of them went into the kitchen. Helios taught her how to prepare some ingredients while he took care of the rest. In the meantime, Barbara did not feel comfortable letting Helios do all the work. So she did her best to help. Her kitchen was always sparkling clean. She had all the cooking utensils, but she had never cooked before. Chapter 8 76 What surprised Barbara was that Helios could actually cook. You. Don't the Bouchers usually have servants? Barbara stood beside him and asked, curiously, do you still need to cook for yourself? Helios answered, while beating the eggs, I seldom go home when I'm filming. I usually stay outside together with the crew, so I'll cook whatever I want to eat. I've slowly picked up the skill over the course of my career. Barbara clenched her hand into a fist, placed it in front of her lips, and cleared her throat faintly. That's not shabby at all. At least, you'll survive even when you're living away from your family. Helios poured the eggs into the bowl and stared at her. I can teach you if you want to learn. Barbara managed to come up with two dishes under Helios's guidance, although the appearance of the dishes did not look good. Compared to what Helios brought out of the kitchen, hers looked more like two bowls of concoctions that came straight out of a fairy tale in which witchcraft was a thing. When the dishes were served on the dining table, Barbara felt that the dishes she had cooked looked really embarrassing. So she moved the two dishes to the side. I think we shouldn't try these two dishes for our own sake. Seeing that Helios had inserted his fork into one of the bowls and picked up its content, Barbara stopped him. Hey. However. He had already taken a bite and started coughing violently before Barbara could react to it. I knew it. Barbara lowered her gaze and forced a smile. I told you not to try it. It's unpalatable, isn't it? 
Helios frowned, but instead of spitting it out, he swallowed it. After a while, he asked, how much salt did you add? She was startled. Didn't you say a spoonful? Helios recalled that when she had asked him how much salt she should add when they were in the kitchen, he did respond to her question with a spoonful. But my spoonful measurement was made based on the size of a teaspoon, did she? Helios' face stiffened as he held something back. Did you use the spoon that I asked you to use together with the cooking spatula to ease your cooking process when you were measuring the amount of salt to add? Barbara was still very calm. Yeah, or else? Helios could not help but let off a giggle. He then quickly covered the corner of his lips with his hand and turned his head away. Judging from his shoulders tiny but repetitive tremors, anyone could see what he was trying to hold back. Barbara realized that she seemed to have made a mistake. And the expression on her face turned slightly rigid. She looked away upon noticing that Helios wanted to laugh at her but was trying so hard to hold back his laughter. You can laugh at me if you want to, I'm sorry. Ahem, I really didn't know that you would, dash Helios laughed out loud. I really didn't know that you would misunderstand the meaning of a spoonful of salt. Barbara felt like she was being seen as a joke. He must think that I'm an idiot. He laughed for a while and finally calmed down. The next time you don't know how much seasoning to add. You can add a little first, then try the dish yourself to see if the taste is enough. She lowered her head and started eating to relieve her embarrassment. Got it. At the Blue Bay Villa. Nolan stood in front of the window in his nightgown while sipping a cup of coffee. Maisie had just finished taking a shower. Her hair draped over her shoulders and back was still dripping, and a few drops of water slid down her body along her shoulders and neck. She picked up the towel and wiped her hair. What are you looking at? What kind of flowers do you like? Nolan put down the cup, turned around, and looked at her. She was stunned for a split second, and a hint of glee flashed across her eyes. Are you planning to give me flowers? Nolan stopped in front of her took the towel from her hand, and gently wiped her hair for her. Yeah, so what kind of flowers do you like? Maisie approached him, stood on tiptoe, and leaned closer to his ear. Her scarlet lips then opened. I prefer pocket money over flowers. He placed his arms on her waist and started tickling her. Naughty girl. She was so itchy that she tried to dodge his assaults and when she realized that she could not do so, she grasped his hand instead. It's my fault, hubby. I'm sorry. Nolan picked her up, put her on the desk, and pulled her into his arms. Maisie wrapped her arm around his neck, poked the peak of his nose with her fingertip, and moved her finger downward. I like blue roses. Chapter 8, 77 Nolan held the back of her hand and raised his brows blue roses? Her scarlet lips curled slightly. Others might prefer red roses and white roses, but I like the rarest of them all. Blue roses are as charming as you are. So who wouldn't like them? Nolan's lips moved closer to her cheek. Oh, are you admitting that I'm charming? She choked on her own saliva and turned her face away. It's a known fact even if I don't want to admit it. Nolan poked her cheek, lowered his head, and kissed her. No matter how charming I am, I'm all yours now. Maisie was very satisfied with his answer. A beautiful silhouette of the two kissing was reflected on the glass window. The next day, Barbara went to the bookstore to buy a cookbook. And she saw several best-selling magazines on the shelf when she was walking toward the cashier. A series of photos that had Helios and Nolan in them was printed on the covers of those magazines. They were all photos that had been taken for their endorsement of soul jewelry. She grabbed a copy and paid for everything in one go. When she walked out of the bookstore, she suddenly saw a woman getting out of a car and took a closer look because the woman felt familiar. That woman was Maisie, and a younger man was sitting in the driver's seat. But it was definitely not Francisco. Maisie even blew kisses at the man in the driver's seat when she got out of the car, making the relationship between them seem overly affectionate. 
She frowned. Isn't Maisie pregnant and is insisting on marrying Francisco? I didn't expect her to be flirting with another man in broad daylight. Barbara followed Maisie stealthily as she wanted to find out who Maisie was going to meet. Maisie walked into a cafe, while Barbara looked into the premises, through the window, and saw Maisie sitting by the window. The woman sitting opposite Maisie was none other than Katrina. Maisie took out a mirror and freshened up her lipstick. I heard that your sister has gotten together with Helios Boucher? Katrina frowned, and her hand that was holding the coffee mug tightened. Pfft. Is that all she has? But what can you do even if you really aren't reconciled? Maisie pursed her lips and closed the mirror. She's the daughter of the Chases. I didn't ask you to come here just to mock me. Katrina did not like to hear what Maisie had to say she was particularly sensitive when it came to her identity. Maisie chuckled. Don't be angry. We're both on the same side. I'll say something nice for you in front of Eugene after becoming his daughter-in-law. I bet he won't make things difficult for you when the time comes. Heh, but as far as I know, you're not the one who will decide whether you can become the daughter-in-law of the Bouchers. Seeing the smirk on Katrina's face, Maisie squinted her eyes. What do you mean by that? Katrina leaned forward and moved closer to her. Don't you ever think that I don't know about the fact that the child in your womb was conceived way before the night you got onto the same bed with Francisco? Maisie's expression changed abruptly, and she almost knocked over the cup of coffee on the table. Katrina propped her hand against her chin and glanced at Maisie. Don't lose your crap just yet, Miss Hannigan. You and I are the only two people who know about this, and I promise no one else will know about it. As for the reason I've asked you out today, it's just to ask you for a favor. No matter what, I did help you once before, didn't I? Maisie clenched her fists. I've been careless. This bitch is not any woman whom I can trifle with, what do you want me to help you with? Maisie did not dare to cause any trouble. After all, she still had to rely on this child to get herself married into the Bouchers. No one can stop me. Absolutely no one. Katrina got straight to the point. I need a certain amount of money. What? Maisie was astonished and thought that she had misheard. You need some money. And I'm the one you come to? Katrina raised her eyebrows. How could you say that? You're the young lady who's about to get married to the Bouchers. What is more prominent than the status that comes with the title of Mrs. Boucher? Chapter 878 Understanding what she meant, Maisie gnashed her teeth. How much do you need? Katrina stretched out eight fingers. Eight million dollars. Maisie gasped and almost fainted due to the astonishment. Why don't you go out there and rob a bank, eight million dollars? Where can I get my hands on so much money? Don't pretend to be poor, Miss Hannigan. Katrina crossed her arms and leaned against the back of the chair. Eight million dollars is nothing to you. You know so many big shots in Bassburg, maybe the father of the baby would okay. I'll help you. Maisie could not help but interrupt her while clenching her hands that were under the table. Katrina knows about my secret, and I mustn't allow her to ruin my plan. Seeing that she was willing to compromise, Katrina picked up her handbag and stood up. Then I'll wait for your good news, Miss Hannigan. By the way, I might need you to get me the money within three days. She then turned around and left the cafe. Maisie was trembling with anger, staring fiercely at Katrina's back as she left. How dare you, Katrina Zalinski. You're just a bastard daughter who can't even make your identity public, and you dare threaten me? Now that Katrina knows the truth about the child, I can't just sit still and wait for my demise Barbara hid in the shadows and frowned as she watched Katrina get in a car and leave the cafe. She had witnessed the interaction between the two of them just now. Although she did not know what they were talking about, the atmosphere between the two felt quite unpleasant. She was not surprised by the fact that Maisie and Katrina would get together. Both of them share common enemies. And that makes them friends. At the Goldman's family estate. 
The fallen leaves in the yard seemed to have formed a golden carpet, covering the whole field, and a few withered petals fell into the pond, creating multiple ripples at once. The reflections running on the stone bridge were Daisy and Colton, and the goldfish living at the bottom of the clear water were shocked and hid in the crevices. Mommy! Daisy rushed into Maisie's arms and handed her the wildflowers she had picked from outside the courtyard. I said this is a Sasanqua camellia, but Colton doesn't believe me. Colton crossed his arms and turned his face away. That's clearly a Japanese camellia, okay? Maisie squatted down, took the flowers from Daisy, scrutinized them meticulously, and sighed. Unfortunately. This is a Japanese camellia. Daisy tilted her head. But I've seen it in a book. Isn't this a Sasanqua camellia? Maisie rubbed her tiny head. Honey, Sasanqua camellias and Japanese camellias are actually sister flowers from the same genus. They do look rather similar to each other. So it's quite easy for someone to mistake one for the other. It's only October, and the Sasanqua camellias haven't bloomed yet. Oh, is that so? Daisy lowered her head. It seemed that she was mistaken. Colton patted her shoulder, proudly waiting to be praised. Daisy. You now understand that I'm omniscient, do you? Daisy glared at him. Shameless boy. How can I be shameless? I'm your dearest brother. Colton stood with his arms akimbo. Everybody else's sisters are usually adorable princesses. Why is mine always mocking and scolding me? No. You're not. It'd be nice if Waylon was here. He always gives in to me, unlike you. Daisy stomped her feet and snorted. She preferred Waylon over Colton. Even if she were to get confused about the difference between a Sasanqua camellia and a Japanese camellia, Waylon would never argue with her and would let her have it her way. Colton sighed. I'm only telling the truth. Daisy turned her face away. Humph. Maisie witnessed helplessly as the two quarreled. In the past, when Waylon was still around, anything he said would be effective against these two. Sure enough, now that he's not here, neither of them will accept what the other has to say Nicholas stood behind them with his cane and laughed frankly, you two rugrats, you're getting noisier and noisier. Chapter 8, 79 Grandpa, Colton is the only rugrat here. Daisy ran up to Nicholas and made a face at Colton. Colton also gave off a grimace, and Nicholas laughed as he was extremely amused. Maisie walked over. Father. Are you feeling better now? She only heard from Quincy that Nicholas had recently been feeling unwell when she accompanied Nolan today. Nicholas had always treated her well, so it was only natural for her to care about him sincerely. Nicholas waved his hand and smiled. Don't worry. It's just a minor relapse. Grandpa, are you suffering from your gastric again? Colton asked. Gastric? Maisie looked at him, and Colton replied with a frown. Grandpa's gastric has always been with him. I'm fine. It's just a minor problem, and it doesn't affect me much. Plus, I've already taken my medicine. He placed his hand on Colton's back and patted him lightly. He then glanced at Maisie and said, I'll go to the kitchen to see if they've finished preparing dinner. After watching Nicholas leave, Maisie squatted down and asked Colton. Has your grandfather had gastric before? Yeah. Colton nodded. When we lived with Grandpa during those three years, he never liked eating very much and often took his medicine, back then. Maisie frowned. Then does your father know about that? Daddy doesn't seem to know. Grandpa didn't allow us to tell Daddy because he wasn't doing too good during those three years. Grandpa didn't want to cause Daddy any more trouble. Colton could not help but tell Maisie everything today, stunning Maisie. She thought of something, and her eyelids could not help but droop. Three years ago, Nolan had been infected with the virus, and his health had been indeed very poor. Nicholas had to come back to manage the company on behalf of Nolan. He must have been very busy, 
as he had to take care of the company, the children, and his son. Thinking of this, Maisie felt downcast. Nolan appeared in the courtyard suddenly and draped his coat over her shoulders. Why are you standing here? She turned her head to look at him, and a tiny reflection flashed at the corners of her eyes in an instant. Nolan was stunned and gently wiped the tears off the corners of her eyes with his fingertips. What's wrong? Maisie plunged into his arms. Nothing, I just want to hug you. Nolan chuckled softly as he stroked her hair. You're already a mother of three. And yet you're still acting so coquettishly. Have you grown tired of me acting coquettishly? Maisie hit him gently. Nolan sneered, hugged her tightly, and pressed his chin against her forehead. Why would I feel so? You acting like a spoiled child is one of my favorite things to watch. Such a romantic scene was forced upon the two rugrats out of the blue. Mommy and Daddy can definitely be very lethal when they're showing off their love for each other. Dinner was ready. And the whole family gathered around the dining table and ate together joyfully. The Goldman's family estate seemed to have not been so boisterous in the past three years. Father, seafood is bad for your digestive system. You shouldn't eat too much. Maisie reminded Nicholas. Nicholas really wanted to eat seafood, but because of Maisie's reminder, he could only take a tiny amount of each seafood dish. Colton peeled the shrimp shells for his grandfather. Grandpa, mommy is right, you can't eat too much seafood. So I'll reluctantly give you a tiny piece to satisfy your cravings. Nicholas hesitated, but he could only compromise in the end. Naha, alright, I'll leave all the seafood to you people tonight. Nolan fetched Daisy and Colton some dishes during the meal, and Daisy turned to look at him. Daddy, the day after tomorrow is your birthday, so I want to wish you a happy birthday in advance. He was surprised, froze for a split second, and then smiled. Well, thank you, Daisy. Nicholas said to the two Rugrats, it's been a long time since your father last celebrated his birthday. I can finally breathe a sigh of relief, no, you guys will be celebrating it with him this year. Chapter 880 Grandpa, won't you come with us to Daddy's birthday party? Daisy asked with her head tilted. I'm too old for a party now. I can no longer stay up late as you, young people do. I have to go to bed early and get up early to keep myself healthy. Nicholas took a sip of Earl Frey tea. After the family had dinner, Nicholas went back to his study while Colton and Daisy went for a stroll with Maisie in the courtyard. Sitting alone in the study, Nicholas looked through some old items, and when he looked up again, the first thing that caught his attention was Nolan, who was leaning against the door silently. He was astounded and put down the items in his hands. Why didn't you go for a walk with your kids and wife? Why have you come here instead? Why didn't you tell me about your gastric? Nicholas lifted his gaze. It's just a tiny issue, so what can I say? Nolan walked to the desk and took a glance at the old box that was lying on the desk, which contained the mementos that belonged to his mother. Have you been suffering from gastritis since very early on? Nicholas did not answer. Nolan looked at him. After mother passed away, you submerged yourself in heaps of work. That was when it started, wasn't it? Nicholas took a deep breath, leaned back in his chair and looked out the window at the setting Sunday, I lost your mother very early on in my life, and I'd think of her whenever I was free. Thus, all I could do was fill all my time with work. You should now understand how I felt back then too. When you thought you had lost Z three years ago, I think you wouldn't even be able to take care of yourself if it weren't for me. But back then, I could only carry all the burdens by myself, I would even have given up on life if it wasn't for you. Nolan lowered his gaze. Then you should have told me. I don't want to cause you any trouble besides, it's just a gastric, not to mention that I've been taking my medicine. I still wish to become one of the witnesses to my grandchildren's growth. So, how can I not cherish my life? Nicholas took an imperial jade bracelet out of the box. It was a memento that belonged to Nolan's mother. 
He had given it to Maisie before this, but Nolan brought it back after Maisie's accident three years ago. Now that Z is back, you should give this to her. There's no need for that. Nolan's gaze shifted from side to side. You gave this to her back, then, as your recognition to her, as your daughter-in-law. But she's now my legal wife, so the sense of recognition is no longer needed. This bracelet belongs to mother. So you should keep it with you. It's just a bracelet, and I can always buy Maisie a new one. I understand just how much this bracelet means to him, and I believe that Z won't want this either. Nolan turned around, walked out, stopped abruptly, and did not forget to remind his father. Take care of yourself. If you really can't do it by yourself, I'll hire someone to take care of you. You promise to be there when the kids grow up. Nicholas stared at the bracelet and murmured with a gratifying smile, Nat, did you see that? Our son has learned to care about his father. Outside, in the courtyard, Daisy sat on the swing and asked Colton to push her, while Colton complained that she was very childish but kept on pushing her anyway. Maisie was breathing in the fresh air, and all the trees, flowers, and every single strand of grass in the courtyard looked exceptionally serene and beautiful. She received a text message at that time and took out her cell phone to check the message's content. The birthday celebration that would take place on the cruise ship tomorrow had been completely set up and all that was left to do was to invite some acquaintances and friends to join them in the night view sightseeing by the sea. A pair of arms wrapped around her waist from behind and she was so frightened that she turned off the screen and turned her head around with a short grumble. You scared me. Nolan rested his chin on her shoulder. Huh? What were you trying to do when I was not around? Maisie pouted. It's... Of course, something huge. Nolan hummed and rubbed his chin against her shoulder. It seems that my wife is organizing my birthday celebration in secret.